Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Truby Chiavello, publisher and editor of uh, Primo Magazine, and I'm bringing you another episode um uh, news from an Italian American perspective. We're going to cover the first uh, two weeks of April, um, April 3rd until April 14th. And I got a lot of interesting things to uh, discuss with you today. Um, here in Washington, D.C., uh, on April 14th, it's uh, a nice day. It's warm and uh, all the spring uh, blossoms are out and about. For me, it's, uh, since I cover since I suffer a little bit from allergy, I'm going to have to take a drink of water once in a while. So salute. Great. So anyway, a lot of news to cover. And I'm going to have to make another video after this one. Because things are developing very, very fast. So I hope to talk to you today about um, uh, Donald J. Trump and what happened to him, what's going on with him in Manhattan, the district attorney's office there, and how that relates to Italy. And I think you find it very interesting. I'm going to talk about uh, the court case in Syracuse, uh, the Columbus Monument Corporation versus the city of Syracuse and trying to save the uh, Columbus Monument there in that city. And uh, an update to what's going on in Maryland. They're trying to change uh, Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. And then also talk about uh, New York City and the, uh, <clears throat> and the uh, Columbus Monument there in Central Park. And uh, then I'm just going to try to tie it all up together and give you some um, ideas that I have about uh, going forward. You know, Italian Americans are on the forefront. We're right on the front lines of a serious battle that's going on in this country. Um, it's uh, uh, an effort to try and really uh, transform the country uh, to a socialist nation. Uh, we always had some socialism here and there in this country, and uh, uh, but this is more broad base more in-depth, um, really a, a serious uh, effort to try and change the country. And Italian Americans are resisting that because they're trying to save Columbus and Columbus Day. And, um, you know, you say why that is. Well, you know, uh, Italy is, uh, I would probably term them as a socialist country, pretty close to it. Uh, maybe a social democracy is what most people uh, define Italy as. Um and that was developed by Italians and based upon Italian history and a lot of things that go along with it, a top-down approach to their governance. Um, that's not the case here in the United States. The United States was founded by our, the, the structure of our government, the ideas that we have regarding our constitution, and particularly in the Bill of Rights, really came about from British Protestants. When they settled in the country, there was a diversity of Protestants that were being persecuted in England. They didn't want that to happen to them here in this country. So they really made it quite free and allowed uh, protections uh, to the individual and groups that they wanted to form. And then that was adopted into the U.S. Constitution later. So this is kind of where we're coming from. Um, so if you want to turn our country into a social democracy or a socialist country, uh, it's not going to work very well unless you try to eliminate the history. To eliminate the history, you have to eliminate, uh, you have to villainize main figures you have to um, change the holidays. Uh, you can even argue to maybe change the flag and the, and the national anthem and just um, take down statues and monuments of famous people from our past. And Christopher Columbus is step number one. Um, what our adversaries want to do is um, take down his uh, monuments and uh, take out his holiday. Um, and then they're going to move on. If they're successful there, they're going to move on to other people it's columbus day now tomorrow it'll be thanksgiving day uh maybe christmas christmas is a federal holiday also and i could see them doing something about that um and then down the road things may change accordingly and then they will then go ahead and try to uh change the change the history the historical narrative of our country and so you probably see this happening and this is what's going on who's doing this you'd have to probably say barack obama and uh, members of the democratic party not all the democrats Mayo. in fact a big part of the democratic party are just traditional liberals that they want to have government programs and government services to help the poor and the needy and this is great but what he wants to do and many of his um, associates with other people affiliated they want to create a different country where the executive branch would be very very powerful um, a diminishment of federalism, states' rights and city rights, and also a diminishment of the Bill of Rights, because you would have to have uh, everybody to um, come on board 
with what they want to do in a socialist country like that. And they can't afford people going out on their own, doing their own things. So this is where we're at. The Italian Americans are at the forefront of trying to protect Columbus, Columbus Day. And by doing so, that'll help you, if you're not Italian American, to save um, statues, holidays, and traditions of importance to this country. And they may not be Italian as well. So this is very important. So uh, today I'm hoping to uh, cover um, a lot of territory. And first up really is Donald J. Trump, his arraignment in Manhattan, his indictment. You guys all know what's going on with that. Uh, the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, uh, is, is, is trying to make a case that Trump broke federal law, mind you, campaign finance law, uh, when um, his lawyer paid hush money to the porn star uh, Stormy Daniels a year after he was elected president. And so this is the case he's trying to make. Uh, I read the indictment, by the way, and I agree with you know these the, many of the legal experts that pretty much say this is kind of a, a crazy case to be made. That's a stretch. It's a stretch longer than Fifth Avenue for him to try to make this case. But uh, what this is all about is targeting the president of the United States through local law enforcement, through your district attorney, through his the prosecutor's office, and try to make a case for that. We've already seen happening with the FBI raiding Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence to try and claim that the uh, illegally obtained um, uh, national security documents uh, same thing has also happened with President Biden. And so using law enforcement, either on a federal level, but now more pointedly on a uh, state city level to um, politicize law enforcement, to attack a key member, a key figure of the political opposition. So Trump, you'd have to argue, is former President Donald Trump is obviously the number one figure of the Republican Party. He's already announced that he wants to run for president. So this is an effort, this case here in Manhattan, and a bunch of other cases, to try and take him down, try and hurt him politically, try and stop him from uh, winning election again, and by being the um, serious figure he is in the Republican Party. Well, where do they get this model from? Everybody agrees we've crossed the Rubicon. We've done something in the United States that we've never done before. Just For, for instance, just picture for a moment, if you can, what it would be like for President Eisenhower, you know, in 1963, he's no longer president and he's hauled off uh, to face a criminal trial in Denver, Colorado, or uh, Jimmy Carter, right? And after 1980, he lost re-election, but three years later, he's hauled off to a court in Atlanta to face criminal charges at this at a local level. It's, it, it's unprecedented. Well, we've passed over to the Rubicon. And the Rubicon is Italy. What we've adopted is the Italian model. Um, Italy is a social democracy. And uh, what Italy did before Donald Trump even thought about entering public office was to attack, was to use law enforcement to try and weaken and even destroy a main person of the opposition party. You have the left and you have the right. The person who was really a dominant figure in Italian politics on the right of the spectrum politically was Silvio Berlusconi. Now, uh, former Prime Minister Berlusconi, he's right now um, in the hospital. And we, when we pray for his recovery, uh, he seems to be doing well. He's right now trying to um, uh, overcome uh, or be treated for his leukemia. And he's 86 years old. And um, he is the longest serving prime minister in Italy since the time Italy re reformed their constitution after World War II. Uh, he was elected um, prime minister from 1994 uh, through 1995. Um, then he served again from 2001 through 2006. And then uh, he was uh, reelected again from 2008 through 2011. Now, the Italian political system is different than ours uh, to a certain extent. It's a parliamentary system whereby you have to, uh, you get your party elected through the various members of parliament, then you create coalitions, and then the, the top person becomes prime minister. That's just generically explaining it to you as best I can. 
and that was Berlusconi. Now, Silvio Berlusconi um, was kind of a parallel figure to Trump. Um, like Trump, he made his money in real estate and in television, a multi-billionaire. And, um, you know, he wanted to enter politics. Uh, there's a debate as to why he wanted to do it. But nevertheless, he wanted to enter politics. This is somebody who had never served in government before. And just like Trump, uh, he might have had connections and associates, but he never I was never elected to any office. And what does he do? He goes for the top position. He goes, he wants to be prime minister. This is back in uh, the mid-90s, 1994. He develops a political party, Forza Italia. So this is a man who owned um, uh, Italy's, uh, Italy has two major television networks, and he owned one of them, and the other one's owned by the government. And Forza Italia, within three months that it was started, won a majority in parliament, and it was able to work out a coalition, and boom, Berlusconi is, is the prime minister. So over the years, as he is building his reputation, he was always in the limelight, just like Trump. He was always on television, always featured in newspapers and magazines. Uh, the opposition tried to hurt him politically, tried to out-debate him, out-legislate him. That didn't work. Uh, trying to gain other figures to try to compete against him. That didn't work. So what did they do? Finally, they decided to go with law enforcement. They politicized law enforcement to attack him and to try and take him down with a criminal legal process. Over the years, um, Italian prosecutors in a variety of cities brought about 35 cases, criminal cases, against Berlusconi ranging from bribery, perjury, uh, embezzlement they charged them with, uh, larceny, um, fraud, uh, all kinds of uh, all kinds of cases. And out of all those cases, out of 35 cases, only one was successful for the prosecutors. And that had to do with tax evasion. This is what we got Al Capone on, right? Well, in Berlusconi, um, in his case, uh, apparently his company wanted to buy a, a media property and he was supposed to pay taxes on it, I believe, and he didn't. So therefore he was, um, convicted of tax evasion. They were going to give, they were going to give him a four year jail term and, uh, you know, two years he couldn't run for public office. They reduced the jail term to, um, one. And then because of his age, he was over 70 at the time. He had to serve in community service, a uh, volunteer four days a week at a local, um, at a nursing home in Milan, where he had the uh, time of his life. He had been a, um, a professional musician, a professional singer. This was a uh, uh, elderly people, some of whom were uh, suffering from dementia. And he went there and he played songs with them. Uh, he sang for them, engaged, and uh, apparently had a, a great time. But this was happening from 2003 all the way until this past March. Uh, the legal process in Italy, you have the, the initial trial stage, then you can appeal it. When you appeal it, you can try the case all over again. Then you have the court of cassation. That's the final word. And this can take years to hammer. And this is what they did. They had one case after another. Boom, boom, boom. Piling it all on. And the investigators and the prosecutors, the local magistrates, would leak information to the press. Um, you have the press that's opposing Berlusconi, but more importantly, the international press, uh, the international press that didn't like him. And they could use that for a host of uh, rumors, salacious material. Um, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. Uh, out of all those cases that were brought up against him, uh, 10 had passed their statute of limitations, another 10 or 12 lost just on the merits and immediate merits. Um, Berlusconi was elected to back to prime minister in parliament. They passed a law where it would uh, maybe try to weaken some of the powers of magistrates. This is all going on, and the effort was to try and hurt him. Uh, the most famous case of all had to do with the charge against him that he um, had sexual relations with an uh, underage woman. Uh, this was a Moroccan uh, immigrant uh, that came to, uh, to Italy the so-called famous Bunga Bunga case, as they called it, 
He brought a journalist to his home, his palace there in Milan, showed him the Bunga Bunga room. Apparently, this was a room where there was all kinds of nefarious sexual deeds going on. And uh, what he showed, uh, what he showed to the to the to this uh, journalist from the United States, mind you, was a room that was uh, the so-called Bunga Bunga room was a beautiful, ornate dining room with chandeliers, candelabra, mahogany uh, walls and sidebars and everything else, quite extensive. Um, and that's what he showed, you know, uh, whatever. But um, that case was brought against him 2013, and they convicted him for nine years jail term. Uh, 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 he was forbidden from ever running again for public office. He appealed that case, won it, eliminated, eliminated all of the um, the sentencing and the punishments. And it was only until March <clears throat> 2023 when the Court of Cassation, the, the, the final uh, word, uh, exonerated. So he no longer had to worry about this. But this is how long it takes. This is how long it took. The purpose of it was was just to weaken him politically. Um, if you're a Trump fan, if you're a Trump supporter, the good news is it really didn't work. Um, uh, he was still elected prime minister. He served longer than any other person since World War II. And um, he was able to take his party, uh, rebuild it when he had the first opportunity he had to run again. He did so for the European Parliament. Uh, this is Silvio Berlusconi we're talking about. And then um, COVID-19, of course, came in the mix. But um, uh, after the pandemic died down, he was able to take his party, uh, coalesce it with the um, uh, Brothers of Italy political party, and then Liga Nord, uh, and then elect get elected the first female prime minister in uh, Georgia, Maloney. And he, Berlusconi, now is in the Senate of the uh, parliament. And, um, you know, if not for his sickness, I think he would probably come back and serve as prime minister again because um, Maloney was elected in, in part because of her opposition to the previous prime minister, Mario Draghi, and his support of the Ukrainian war, the support of the Ukrainian side. But when she was elected, she just went ahead and followed uh, what NATO and the European Union wanted. It's Berlusconi who was saying, end this war now. You know, this is a, this is a big mistake. Uh, and he's and he's actually criticizing NATO's expansion for a reason why um, Vladimir Putin had to invade Ukraine. And so as this war wears on and it becomes more difficult for Italy to, to, to deal with this, he was becoming more popular. So, um, you know, I wonder what's going to happen when he is able to come back from ICU um, and, um, and, and come back into politics. The bad news of it, of course, is that um, the United States, by going down this road, by politicizing uh, law enforcement, by politicizing the magistrates, as they did in Italy, as they did in Italy, um, you know, we're no longer that exceptional country that we once were. We're no longer the country that our ancestors came to. Our ancestors wanted to leave the uber politi politicization uh, that they found in Italy. The, the constant intrusion, the constant um, politics. Uh, they want to be. They wanted to be left alone, and and, and try and, and and find their way. And this is what attracted them in part to the United States. Well, that country is no longer in existence. And now we've been taken it one step further, and we've uh, been politicizing our law enforcement and prosecutors and the local. We've come to really have dived into uh, the old world, uh, the social democracies that are there. And so what we have to do as Italians is we have to we have to fight this as best we can. And we're doing it in the courts. And this is uh, where we're trying to make headway. Um, in Syracuse, uh, on April 3rd, uh, is an important case going on now. If you're outside of New York, and you're in another state, another county, whatever, not another place, you're going to ask yourself, what does New York have to do with me? Why is Syracuse so important to me? Well, um, we found out, <clears throat> what the Italian-Americans have found out, that it's not so easy for a mayor or a city council or however, even a governor, to just say, you know, that statue, take it down. Columbus statue, just get rid of it. Uh, we've learned through 
legal research that when those statues were erected, at least the case in um, Marconi Plaza in Philadelphia, George Paquetto was the attorney there, um, he found out that this statue of Columbus was given to um, a land trust. And the land trust um, was going to have it there on Philadelphia property. But it doesn't, it's not really to the city, it's to the this land trust organization. Therefore, the mayor doesn't have a right to tear it down. And so this comes up. And so uh, in the case of Syracuse, <clears throat> Tony Pietrofisa, uh, the lawyer there, um, his research showed that uh, at one point in time, they wanted to repair the statue back in the 90s with contributions from uh, the, the, the county that surrounds Syracuse, Onondaga County, and the city of Syracuse, but also from the Columbus uh, Monument Corporation, uh, which was an organization that was that's, that's founded, and they're the ones that are bringing this case uh, to court. Uh, and when they fixed the statue, they repaired the statue back in the 90s, it was agreed upon that that statue would remain. So if the mayor... Mayor Ben Walsh wants to tear that statue down. He's breaking a contract. He's breaking an agreement. And so this is happening. So if you're in another community somewhere outside of New York, in a different location, you can view this closely uh, to see how you can utilize what they're doing in your neck of the woods, you know, in your in your community. You might have the same situation going on, and you can bring that to court. And um, even if they lose in New York, now, there's that dissent. There's what the judges and the opposition have come up with. And their established law uh, can be looked upon um, and followed in your state or in your community. That's the best way I can explain it, I, I guess. But that's why it's very important uh, for all of us to watch these cases. Hmm. In Syracuse, back in, um, this was April 3rd, they brought the, uh, the, the appeal. And it was in Rochester, and it was um, <clears throat> it was the uh, Columbus Monument Corporation versus the city of Syracuse. And the mayor of Syracuse was Ben Walsh. He's forty years old. Uh, his father was a congressman, conservative Republican. His uh, grandfather was once the mayor of Syracuse. He too was a conservative Republican. And Ben Walsh. Doesn't even belong to the Democratic Party. It belongs to even the two parties that are even beyond, that are more radical uh, towards the left. Now, why did he do that? Well, that's because the state legislature changed the district where his father came from, and his uncle, or his uh, grandfather, when served in Syracuse. It's a different entity now, it's a different political entity. So, in order to fit that um, district, he became uh, more uh, radical, more leftist. And um, so he's the one who's leading this effort. And they brought this appeals case to Rochester. Uh, that's where the appellate uh, court is. That's the uh, Supreme Court of the state of New York, fourth uh, judicial department. That's the appeals. They call all, all the phases of New York. It's considered the Supreme Court, which can be a little bit uh, confusing because you know, we think of the Supreme Court, we think of the United States Supreme Court or your state Supreme Court for them. And all courts are considered you know, supreme. But anyway, uh, they brought the case to uh, uh, on, on April 3rd. And um, they had a, um, the judges on the bench at the time were uh, Judge Gerald Whelan was the presiding judge, Tracy Bannister, Donald uh, Greenwood, Aaron Paradato, and uh, Mark Montour. And um, several judges recused themselves. And they, um, <clears throat> they're not sure why that is. Um, Judge Greenwood and Judge Whalen um, uh, were from Syracuse. They had some connections to the um, trial judge, Gerard Neary, who ruled in favor of the uh, of the uh, Columbus Monument Corporation. Uh, he ruled that the mayor didn't have the right to tear down the statue, uh, and there was a lot of case law involved. But um, apparently one of these judges knew him, so with those judges to recuse themselves, another judge who recused her, her himself was Stephen Lindley. Um, well, he, he replaced him, I'm sorry. But um, um, they didn't know why one of the judges recused himself. 
So take that for what it is. And this was the last case they heard that day in appeal. And, um, you know, the appeal went pretty well, I thought. Uh, you know, some of the judges were asking questions, trying to throw off uh, the counsel. But uh, the word is from um, the good people there in uh, Syracuse, the Italian-Americans there in Syracuse, that no matter how this turns out in appeal, they're going to keep on going. <laughs> they're going to, if they don't win, they're going to appeal it again to whatever the highest state. That would be probably the uh, state Supreme Court in New York. And uh, my feeling about this with uh, Syracuse and Philadelphia and any other uh, cities that come in, uh, the Conference of Presidents of Major Italian American Organizations, <clears throat> under the leadership of Judge Basil M. Russo, has pushed this idea forward of taking these cases to court. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's not so simple for marriage to tear down a statute. There's agreements that are involved. There were uh, other types of things going on when the statutes were donated. Might have been donated to a, a to a land trust or some other organization that happens to have uh, an agreement with the city to put statues there on their property. So my feeling is this is probably going to go to the Supreme Court to figure out what the mayors can do and what they can't do and go from there. And I would be surprised if they work out something whereby, you know, they can do this, but they can't do that sort of thing. And then you have to keep on uh, other cases are going to come up and keep on trying. Them. So pay close attention, please, to what's going on in Syracuse. Uh, it's a very important case. Um, they devoted a lot of time and effort to it. <clears throat> I'm going to post a link uh, to the Columbus Monument Corporation if you want to donate money to them. They, uh, you know, they have done an amazing job too, and you can look at their as a model as well. They were closed out by the um, by the city, um, by the Syracuse University, the academia, the historical society, and the local media. So you know they've got four of these major pillars. Of, uh, of local of local government and local control. So what are they going to do? Well, under the um, leadership of Nicholas Pirro, the former um, uh, county executive uh, there in Onondaga, in Onondaga County, um, he had a lot of experience in politics. And so what he did was basically he put lawn signs all over the place <laughs> saying for the mayor, you know, hands off our Columbus Monument. Uh, Columbus Monument. And um, he had a great website to inform people, kept on emailing people. Uh, my good friend up there, Robert Gardino, does their uh, does their um, media relations. He did, he's done an awesome job. And it's just building that support among the people to put, um, you know, to kind of uh, equal things out, at least. And that's what they've done. And you can do the same as well. And uh, so I'll put a link there with the Columbus Monument Corporation. Uh, for the record, they have reached out to the mayor before. They offered a compromise solution: keep the statue there, and we will we will help you fund a park for other statues of other ethnic groups. And they're willing to donate twenty thousand dollars to do that. And the mayor just said no. And now, of course, the mayor is saying, "Oh, this group has never tried to reach out to." That's not true, of course. But this is what's going on. This is a political battle and a legal battle, and um, you have to watch these cases closely. To, um, uh, to better suit our needs when things come up. So that's going on in Syracuse. Another big event that's going on was the Maryland House Bill 446. If you live in Maryland, this is very important to you, of course, where um, the state of Maryland is trying to, um, the legislature there is trying to change Columbus Day into Indigenous Peoples Day. And this is happening all over parts of the country. And it's House Bill 446. I'm going to try to put a link for you where you can watch how far this goes wrong. This bill is still in committee. And so there was a call by Primo and so many other groups for Italian Americans to email <laughs> the legislators there. Uh, the sponsoring legislator is Marlon Amprey from uh, Baltimore City, a Democrat, uh, and the committee chair chairwoman, uh, hands off Columbus Day, keep Columbus Day. If you want to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, do it as the federal government has issued the day after Thanksgiving. That's when you're supposed to celebrate uh, Indigenous people, Native Americans. So why don't you do that and leave Columbus Day alone? So this is what we uh, had people email. Uh, the person who's working on our behalf there, uh, working on behalf of the Italian Americans is Nino Mangioni. He's um, from Baltimore County, he's a Republican. So um, I'm gonna try to give you a link to his email address as, as well. And uh, if you're from Maryland, please, uh, and you don't want them to change Columbus Day, please get involved. Please email uh, your representative and the representatives I mentioned 
that they uh, want to change Columbus Day, tell them don't change Columbus Day. And for those that want to keep Columbus Day, say, you know, please uh, keep the battle, keep on defending what we're doing. So that's in Maryland. We've covered Syracuse. We've covered uh, um, how the prosecution of Donald J. Trump is based upon what happened in Italy 25 years, years prior. And this all stems from what the prosecutor in New York is doing, Alvin Bragg, district attorney. Well, um, New York is also um, where the re- my final report is. It has to do with the Christopher Columbus Monument in Central Park. It was vandalized back on February 26th. Now, I have video of that that maybe I could share with you. I'm going to try to see what I can do. But they had a surveillance camera there in the park at night. And you can see two individuals. They had a small fence around the um, a barricade around the statue. And they hopped over this barricade, or whatever, they walked around it or whatever, and spray painted hand and spray painted criminal, murderer, give the land back, what have you. And we have um, that surveillance tape. You can immediately go on our social media sites, our Facebook page and our Twitter page. You can see the video. It's, it's, it's quite harrowing um, and very disturbing. Um, it reinforces the lawless nature that's, that's, that's happening right now. Um, uh, a, a trend that's been on its purpose, uh, which, in, which we see more crime, we see more vandalism, more graffiti, and the political aspects of it, the targeting Columbus and the targeting the uh, Columbus Monument in Central Park. Now, my hope is, is that um, they find the perpetrators. We have a video of them, so we must make some headway about it. Mayor Eric Adams of New York has promised Angelo Vivolo, uh, he's the president of the Columbus Heritage Coalition, that they're going to get these people. And, um, you know, that's the, that, that, that we're hoping also is that not just the Italian Americans will push this, but um, Spanish Americans. Uh, when I say Spanish Americans, I mean people who emigrated from Spain. A significant number of them um, came to the United States and I hope they come on board because the sculptor was uh, from Spain. Uh, Geronimo Sono Pujol was his name. And he sculpted the statue there. And, uh, you know, uh, Hispanics are uh, proud of their Spanish culture and their um, people who share their ethnicity. They should come on board also. To, to find the perpetrator, prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. Um, and that's what must be done. So, um, you know, we just don't want the Italian Americans also. We want the Italian Americans. Spanish Americans, whoever was involved in any of these statues, the more we have, the stronger our case will be. And that's what we want to do. So this is what it's all about. The Italian Americans are really on the front line of what is an effort to try and change our country. And what you can do is um, in your organization, your local group, be aware that this isn't just going to happen in New York, or Philadelphia. Boston, New Haven. It's going to happen in your neck of the woods eventually. It's going to come. And what I ask you to do is please pay attention. Please be a part of this. Um, because it can't be this all. And uh, it's a very smart idea of uh, what uh, Judge Russo, Basil M. Russo, has done with the Conference of Presidents of major Italian American organizations to push the courts, push our legal uh, rights in this direction. And um, this is what what we can do. I'm going to try to get links there for you to um, have a better understanding of what the cases are all about. You can utilize what they're doing in Philadelphia and Syracuse, for instance, in your community to stop uh, people trying to change, trying to tear down a monument of Columbus or maybe of another important figure of American history. To preserve American history, we have to preserve our statues. We have to preserve our figures, our contributions contributed to our country, we have to push back against the uh, polemic um, uh, uh, reinterpretation of American history, which often is villainizing people, uh, condemning the founding of our country, and for something worse. It's going to get going to be much worse, <laughs> trust me, uh, if they want to have a massive socialist um, post-constitutional society. It would be unimaginable, but that's what they're trying to do. And so we have to fight it the best way we can. And right now, the best way we can is to is to look at the Italian Americans, look what we're doing in the courts elsewhere uh, to save Columbus Day, 
and to save um, uh, Columbus statues and, and, and monuments and other public works of art. So uh, we're doing other things as well. And I hope to have another video to talk about some other things we're doing, uh, the Italian American community. And uh, so please, if you like this video, uh, please subscribe. Please like it. Uh, that will help me out a lot. And uh, we've got a new edition coming out, a new print edition coming out. Uh, it's literally at the printers. Uh, it's going to get mailed, and you're going to receive it at your home. And I'm going to update the website to show who's on the cover. And who is on the cover? Well, you have to wait and see and find out. Uh, just check out our website and our social media sites. Uh, sometime within the next few days, and you'll see who we're going to put on the cover. Who is on the cover, I should say. So a lot of great things are happening. Again, please uh, subscribe to this video. Please like it. Uh, and um, thank you very much for watching. And uh, God bless you all. And uh, until we meet again, uh, until next video. Thank you very much.